Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus and check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4 as well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video today back on NCAA 14. The Ozark State Outlaws Dynasty today playing Louisiana Lafayette Raging Cajuns. And I want to address a few things before we start, as I love to do. I love to deep dive into the comment section. A couple people, and of course I am recording this um, well in advance of the other episodes going up, but I just recently uploaded LSU and the ULM game, so some people complain about the slider change, that I changed it from being 60-40 in favor of the CPU to 50-50, which is default Heisman difficulty, like everybody else on YouTube plays. So you, you can quit whining about that. I'm keeping it at 50-50 for now on Heisman. And others were, were like, you know, all you do is whine and complain about uh, the game and losing. It's like, what do you want me not to be emotionally invested in the series and the games? I'm playing a win, man. I'm going to be upset if I lose, especially a heartbreaker like the LSU game. So quit crying in my comment section, please. And... What else? Oh, yeah. Somebody wanted to see recruiting, so I am down to show you recruiting. Also, I am so sick of my Elgato program freezing because I was just getting into the game. It was the first quarter, and my computer froze. I'm so sick of re-recording these intros. It's unbelievable. Probably have to do it again at some point. But this is the status of some of these players, a few of which are visiting today, actually. Can we see that? A few are visiting today. Chris Holmes, I believe, is visiting today. We'll see in game. I think it's Claude Rose, too. But I'll check just to show you guys everybody. These are the current statuses. Kirby Johnson, five-star quarterback, we're in the lead on. But he doesn't really seem like he wants to go anywhere. Badly, he seems very undecided, even though we are in the lead. And pretty much the way I'm doing recruiting is anyone in the 70s, I'm pretty much interested in as a player because it helps us out a lot. Especially like these 73-plus overall players. They're really good. Other guys were far out on. I just haven't removed from the board yet. And a guy like Omar Williams, I really, really want to get out of Bell Chase, Louisiana. I think I showed in one of the previous episodes. I don't remember. It's been a little while. Um, but he is a very, very good player. Six foot four, 92 speed, great receiving numbers. He would instantly be our best receiver. And we had to break the lock to get back in this battle. And he visits soon. Week 14. Here's the problem. It's week 12. He's visiting LSU this week. He's visiting Texas in week 13. Texas is out. But LSU could get back in it, I think. LSU could get back in the battle. We need him to come now. Because we are, we are dropping behind. We are losing. We need to get back in. But other players like Andy Curry, pretty much dead set on Ozark State. Mike Marshall, that Maryland is making a push for him. We're trying to get offensive line. Really, really want Claude Rose. He is a player that is visiting this week that is on the fence, but he's a gem. Really, really want to add him. I think this would be an incredible addition to our team, and we might be losing here. We're barely in the cutoff, but he is visiting. We need to make the most of this opportunity, complete all the goals. We don't want him going to Utah. I don't want him going to uh, Washington State. We need him in an Ozark State Outlaw uniform. These are the rest of the players in case you care. Uh, a lot of these are close battles and we are going to do the best we can to recruit some of these players to Ozark State. We're trying here, but it's difficult. This is still a really good recruiting class for us, but uh, we'll have to see. Today, we're focusing on this game against the Louisiana Lafayette Raging Cajuns in Week 12. Let's get a win. Visiting players today are Charles Pettit, three-star defensive end. So we're looking to get three sacks with the D-line. Two tackles for loss with the D-line. And we get a lot of sacks with uh, our linebackers. So we're really going to have to focus, try to get our D-line to get pressure. Claude Rose, center. Really, really need to get him on the Ozark State Outlaws. So we need to rush for over 100, pass for over 250. Should be doable. And then for Brian Cunningham, three-star cornerback, we need four swatted passes and two interceptions. Also... I forgot to do it again. When I tried to record this the first time, before the computer froze, I was talking about Kedrick Cunningham, or I wanted to, uh, and then I remembered in-game, 
and it was raining, so I can't really set the scene there. But uh, Kendrick Cunningham is not on the depth chart, and you would have seen this whenever the game was where Colby Spencer was injured and Pedro Goddard was injured, because I went and I tried to look, and he didn't appear in the depth chart. I would have I would have played him when Goddard and Colby Spencer went down. I don't know where he is, so I'll have to check back and, and maybe get him on the depth chart for sure, because he's probably better than our third string qu uh, quarterback right now. But we're at the saloon, dual field. I've kind of been all over the place repeating myself, but I guess you wouldn't know that. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead, get the football first, score. It's a Colby Spencer show, he's back. People are also complaining about the play calling uh, with Colby Spencer. Like, why were you passing on the goal line? I'm like, I don't even remember that. I guess I black out when I record some of these. I just have no idea what I'm doing. Probably, probably what happened. Uh, or if Colby Spencer was tired or injured or something, I didn't want to run read option. So, no clue. People seem kind of mixed on Colby Spencer. Like, he's obviously a really good playmaker. Uh, as we get the ball to roll in Francisco over the middle. But he is made of glass. You're not wrong about that. But also, he's tough as nails. The guy dislocates his shoulder, just pops right back in the game after a few plays. Like, he's a warrior. He really is. Or an outlaw. Maybe that'll be the next dynasty. The Warriors. Golden State. That'll be a fun one. Over the middle, it's Gaither. I feel like he's had a little bit of a, a problem with drops recently. But we'll have to see. He's a really good player for us. Definitely want to keep getting him involved. So... Let's go ahead and maybe try to target him again. We got a receiver wide open over the middle. I pass led to the inside. Is that what that gets me? Is that what a pass lead to the inside does? Throws it 10 yards into the complete wrong area? What in the H? Over the middle. Gaither holds on. Yeah, do more of that. Do a lot less dropping the ball when we need you to hold on. That should be wide open. There we go, Karan Kirkpatrick. Number one on the field, number one in your heart. With two ones, 11 yards. There we go. We are just nickel and diming, picking apart the Raging Cajun defense. This is what I call a drive. I mean, nothing flashy so far, no huge gains, but hey, five yards, five yards, six yards, eight yards, five yards, ten yards, and the pitch goes to Darren Maxwell. Good spin, and he's still going. Darren Maxwell broke a tackle, and he's got the end zone. Pay dirt for Darren Maxwell, 29 yards to the house. What a run. Triple option pitch went to Darren Maxwell, and he's looking like Darren Maxwell last year. Before he got benched for Scott Lewis. What a play. Really? Is this still going? Are you kidding me? Big first play by the Raging Cajun offense. But it's Tariq Parrish in the backfield with the tackle for loss. He's played really well for us, man. He's a guy that wasn't super hyped up coming into this season. He wasn't one of those players to watch. He was kind of just like starting at... Strong safety, I guess. Didn't play any much last year. But he's been fantastic. He really has been. As Daryl Bradford makes a great tackle. And the running back, Darius Hoggins. Loss of one again, and it's going to bring up third and 12. They're throwing over the open receiver. That beat the spot in the zone, I'll tell you. But it falls incomplete. And the outlaw offense is getting the football back as it is a packed house. Is this the most packed we've seen dual field? I think it is. There are a lot of people here. Get to the outside, Outlaw. Oh, there we go. Slowest 91 speed in NCAA, but still, or 92, whatever it is. Good pickup of 27. I wanna throw that ball. Can he hit it on the run? Ooh, Roland Francisco drops the ball. I was right where it needed to be, though. That's a good throw. Wow, what is that blitz? What is that blitz? That was absolute heat off the edge. Reggie Adams. 
Already his second tackle for loss. Jesus. Wide open down the middle. Where's the safety? It's Jake Rodriguez. All the way down to the two or the three. 65 yards. What is the defense doing? The safety just has no clue. And Jake Rodriguez really has been a favorite target of mine lately. We've been just dishing the ball to him with Colby Spencer. Hand off to Scott Lewis. He's got the end zone. As both running backs have two touchdowns. Who would have guessed? No wide receiver, no tight end, not Colby Spencer. It's both running backs. Darren Maxwell and Scott Lewis. What is happening? No! Get him! Parham gonna run. And... Okay, I don't really even know what to say about that one. That was weird. Should have been a tackle. It wasn't, and then it was. Kind of. Third and three. It's a run somehow to Barnes. Wait. How did that even happen? That was a weird play. Did he... It almost looked like he caught this snap. I don't know. Maybe I just saw it weird. Get there. Great tackle. Who is that? Who's 58? Is that Dante Jean? It is. Good stuff. It's kind of weird. I know we've been playing some really good teams lately, but even even last week against ULM, their running back would not go down. This one doesn't really put up much of a fight. To draw? Uh, get there, please. Thank you. Good tackle. Uh, they're going to the flat. That's wide open. And he's breaking tackles now. That's Trey Raga. That's a different one. And that's going to be a touchdown. No one's going to be able to get there. Quarterback Tyler Parham gets in the end zone. We were looking so good defensively. And then we just kind of collapsed these last uh, four or five plays. We're going to step up in the pocket. Colby Spencer has some room. I'll try to spin. Ah, oh, wow. Can you imagine we got around that? That'd be a huge gain. Still was pretty good anyway, 18. Oh, we got him over the top. Lobbing it up to Ryan Muller, it's on the money. He breaks a tackle. Falls forward. What is the UL, no, ULL, Louisiana Lafayette defense doing? Their secondary, non-existent. That's open. Spencer, oh, and Rob Gaither can't hold on. I think somebody said in the comments that uh, their favorite player is Rob Gaither, which is kind of cool. Who is your favorite player on the Ozark State Outlaws team? Let me know. Give me, give me one offense and one defense. The speed of Colby Spencer. We maybe had an option there with B. Would have been a tough throw. I'll opt for the slide instead. Gaither holds on. Big first down. On third down. And now it's first and goal. Speed option. Spencer breaks a tackle. I didn't want to pitch it. That would have been a dangerous pitch. Oh, this got to be an easy touchdown. I handed it off to Scott Lewis instead of taking it myself with Colby Spencer. Clearly not the right decision. It's so crazy how I struggle to run the ball in on the goal line for one reason or another. That's why I often opt to pass. Just because I can do a little bit more and... Scoring a number of different ways. Not going to work out this time. We get sacked. And can't cap off this good drive with the touchdown. It all fell apart after the big play. After we got inside the uh, enemy territory. Field goal is good. 69 puts it through. Nice. Good stuff from Pete Riley. We got a 10 point lead. Oh wow. He cut it back inside. That's a great decision by the running back. It's a pitch to the outside. Get there. Good defense. Forcing him back inside. Wrapped up. I think that's Tariq Parrish who made the tackle. I'm telling you, he's, he's played pretty well. Under the radar, but he's played well. They're passing. That is wide open to Robinson. Doing anything we can to make an open field tackle. They pick up 34 on third down. He's going to run up the middle. And he goes down. They're not going to call that a sack. 
Goes to Sandoval Slaughter. I guess it wasn't behind the line. Barely. That's a great tackle. Jeff Fisher in the backfield. They're going short. Oh my goodness, we can't wrap up and, and make the tackle. Oh man, another first down. That was tough. Parham gonna run. He goes down again. This time it counts as a sack. Need two more of those. It's Daryl Bradford. Going to the outside. It's complete to Robinson. Tariq Parrish couldn't make the play. Come on, dude. We're getting eaten alive by Tyler Parham at quarterback. Pa Parham? Who cares? Colby Spencer already has 172 passing yards. It's the second quarter. Let's put some more streaks out here. See if anybody gets open. I think Scott Lewis does. Oh, good defense. I'm trying to score before half, man. It's proving to be a little bit difficult. They're not giving up. We're going to throw to Scott Lewis. He picks up the first down. I didn't really expect the pressure to come from that direction. And we kind of got a lot more if we went a different way. Francisco over the middle. He holds on for the first. Clock stops momentarily. We should have enough time to score with three timeouts. We really should. There you go, Scott Lewis. There's a juke. Spin. Scott Lewis is a beast. You can't touch him. Jake Rodriguez. Bowl him over. All right, not quite. A little bit premature on lowering the shoulder there. Third and two. Play action. Oh, I want to throw. We're going to try to escape. Breaking a tackle and then falling down. No. Oh, my goodness. You want us to go for it here? You know what? We will. Let's pick up the first down. I think we got Gabriel Timmons. We're gonna throw it. Caught by Timmons, he lays out. 28 yard touchdown and being aggressive pays off. Colby Spencer's first passing touchdown of the day. Well, I guess second. I think the Darren Maxwell. Ah, no, that was a pitch. And then a run. No, yep. First, first pass and touchdown of the day. Make the tackle. Oh, my goodness, you beast. They're not going to give that to Jeff Fisher, are they? I hope not. Nope. Devin Robeson gets it. Start of the second half now. We are up 24-14. Again, the aggressiveness pays off. And what was that? Oh, wow. Hoggins reversing field. Big hit by Tariq Parrish, but he holds on to the football. I don't know how that worked. Oh, great tackle. He's got top-notch ball carry vision, but uh, he does not have any break tackle ability at all. That's a first down and more. Jeez, dude. Can we make a stop defense? So you're placing or playing LSU all over again with Leonard Fournette just running down our throats now with this Ragas guy. Yeah, get Hoggins back in the game. We can handle him. Oh, it's a reverse to Barnes. And he's going to throw off one. Where's Tariq Parrish? Goes to Ragas. This is going to be a touchdown. Oh, he cut back for no reason. First and goal from the, like, eight now. Let's bear down, focus up, get the stops. Let's shut them down from the, that's from the six. Oh boy. This is going to be tough. I think we can do it. Let's just shut them down. Here's a run. Oh man. That, that was like a lot better of an idea in my head. It didn't go well. Hand off. He's Morse right through the hit stick. That's one thing that future Maddens have done much better is tackling because it is blatantly it's just so bad how, how it is in NCAA 14 zones and tackling have been improved over the years for sure oh my goodness I was caught by Rob Gaither I'll be the first to tell you I pressed the wrong button as I often do I wanted to check down to Scott Lewis and it said we threw a jump ball for Rob Gaither. 
who goes up, gets it, survives a massive hit, and holds on. I want to go to Gaither. We're going to do it. Colby Spencer's got the arm. Drops it in the bucket for Rob Gaither. 45-yard gain. That's what I'm talking about. On a screen. Unbelievable. Six-yard touchdown run on a wide receiver screen. How do you like them apples? That's a read option. Oh, my goodness. We, we bit. We fell for it. Yo, this quarterback does not go down. That's over the middle, and nobody would love to have a safety in there who could have made that play. Unfortunately not. That's going to be wide open to Barnes. Going to switch on, try to make the tackle. Blankenship forces him out of bounds after a gain of 33. Louisiana Lafayette still very much in this game, despite how powerful her offense has been. Gene in the backfield. Like, how do you not want me to complain about tackling when that's what just happened to me? When that just happened? I'm not even going to check the replay, but, like, I'm going to be getting PTSD flashbacks from that. I'm going to wake up in a hot sweat. Thinking about running right into the backfield to make the tackle and not being able to tackle him. As Daryl Bradford picks up his second sack of the game. Third tackle for loss. He just got right through there. Unblocked, really. Screen. Get over there. There we go, I guess. Maybe they'll settle for a field goal. Kick is up and good. They're going to make it a touchdown game. 53 seconds left in the third quarter. We're not going to take our foot off the gas pedal, though. The best defense is a good offense for this Ozark State Outlaw team. Go, Colby. Get out of the way, please. And he fumbles the ball. Get out of the way! It's recovered by Walker. He's into the end zone for the touchdown. And guess what? Colby Spencer has another fumble that resulted in a touchdown. More PTSD flashbacks to the LSU game. Outlaw is now out for two quarters. Chris Outlaw, CB number two on our depth chart. And it's a 31-31 game. Ah, man. Easy completion, wide open. Jake Rodriguez, good power. Start of the fourth quarter. We're going to run with Colby Spencer, I think. Back up the middle. Damn, I want to block. I know we're taking hits, which could lead to a fumble. But uh, just I'd, I'd love a block. It'd be great. Oh, good blocking up the middle. Good juke, Scott Lewis. Such a fun player to use in this. It is so weird, though, with Scott Lewis, because that was only his fourth carry, and he's averaging four yards per carry, which is not uh, great in college. But he has these plays where he's just incredible, and then... A lot of times he just stuffed in the backfield. I, I think it's got to be on our offensive line. It is not a great old line. Well, I mean, obviously, we don't have a great anything. Because I make the wrong read again. It was so clear what was going on. Can I suddenly not do read option? It feels like every time I don't play the game for uh, a few days or a week, I get back on and I have no idea how to run the read option. It is something else. Third and six. We're rolling out. Don't be that fast. Jesus. Gee, what do you... Stop being good. Stop recognizing what's going on. Colby Spencer too tired to do that. And I guess we're going for it again. Dude, whoever this offensive coordinator is, has it out for Pete Riley or doesn't think he's good or something. We're going to try to convert on fourth and six. We're going to throw that ball. It's complete to Ryan Muller. First down. Also, there's a bunch of people. That's Mueller. Where those are getting back up again for some reason? No, it isn't. It's Muller. I asked him myself. He told me. As Colby Spencer's out. Fantastic. Roland Francisco first down. Picks up 10. Sprain wrist. Colby Spencer's coming back in the game. Play through the pain. This is no Pedro Goddard BS happening. 
Ran the ball off. We're driving to the end zone. Darren Maxwell, easy touchdown. His second of the game. When's the last time Darren Maxwell had two touchdowns? Had to have been last season. There's no way he's done it this year. There's absolutely no way. It's over the middle, wide open. Why would it switch me on to Tariq Parrish there? Weird. Get there, John. Need that big tackle. There we go. Colt 45 in the backfield. That's what I'm talking about. Third and four. It's a run. Big tackle by Sandoval Slaughter, but Hoggins picks up the first anyway. Wow. Get there. I'm going to need a big tackle. Oh, there we go. Hold on, just that's a lot of receivers. And it's going to be a read option. Handoff goes to the running back, Ragas. He's got a big gain of 16. And Louisiana Lafayette doing a little bit more than knocking on the door right now. They're busting it down. We got to make it stop. We got to hold them back. To screen. Get out there. There we go. Big tackle for loss. Darius Hoggins goes down. Who made that play? That's number 94. I don't even know who that is. You should probably figure that out. Is that Mark Heath Palmer? Is that his name? I don't I don't know who 94 is. He never plays. It wasn't Simeon Petty. That might have been my guy, Mark Heath. It's another screen. Why are they throwing that? Get out of here. On third and 15, that's the play call. We're blitzing. Get it! Byron Fulton drops the interception. Almost for the best. But that would have been nice for the stat sheet. It's a shame for him, honestly. There we go, Scott Lewis. Good juke back. Good block. Try to spin back. Also want that clock to keep ticking. Or we want... At the very least, the Raging Cajuns to use their three timeouts. They only have one remaining. Read option. Why are we getting crazy? I don't know. It's fun. Another read option. They read that one pretty well. But that is the ball game. Ladarius Kidd had quite a game. Three tackles for loss for his four tackles. Kobe Spencer finishes with 50 on the ground and a touchdown. And we're going to finish in the lead, 38-31. This was a close one against the Raging Cajuns. They played well. I don't know. It was kind of a weird game. I feel like their offense wasn't too dominant, but at times it was good. I feel like we played well offensively. But, I mean, it, I don't know. It doesn't feel like it was as close as it was. I don't know if you guys kind of get that same sense or not. Um, but, yeah, I would say we played well. I think we did what we needed to do. I think we got over 100 yards rushing. Clearly got 250 passing. Colby Spencer was great again. Uh, and we did get over 100 yards pretty easily from Colby Spencer, Scott Lewis, and Darren Maxwell, who played great today. It was a blast from the past. Jake Rodriguez, 100, catch, or 100 yards, excuse me, 100 catches would be pretty impressive. Great diving catch by Gabriel Timmons, a senior. Rob Gaither, redshirt freshman still. He has so much potential. 73 overall is not that high right now. But he plays better than Roland Francisco. So like to see that defensively who was great today Daryl Bradford Daryl Bradford was excellent it is a real shame nobody else got a sack because we needed three no interceptions but the team played well as a whole I really like this performance we were we were solid today that is gonna do it for this week though guys we advanced to six and three we are looking like a bowl eligible team because we are so this was a big victory for us Next week, we got South Alabama at South Alabama. Going to take down RBT. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.